$2,520. And I'm like, you know what? Your boy, so smart, he's rolling it. Okay? So the guy that actually won this coin, well, what happened? It got reconned. And, uh, you know, a little bit of a bruise to my ego, but it is uh, helping me understand uh, American Silver Eagles. Wow, another beautiful day in Texas, you know, you gotta, you know, what are we, what are we doing outside, you may ask, I don't know, gotta check for this PCGS sub, oh wow, what is that, gold, oh man, I guess my PCGS sub is here, so, uh, stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Drew with Kusha Collectibles, welcome back to a brand new video, we did get our PCGS sub back, nice gold box, and in this video we're gonna be talking about how you never really lose on a PCGS or NGC order. Uh, stay tuned to figure out what I'm talking about, but uh, like I said, enjoy the video and uh, you're about to see some nice coins. Hey guys, it's Lightbox Time. I wanted to show you guys a few, uh, or actually all the coins that we got back from PCGS. Uh, some good, some bad, but I'm going to tell you uh, why uh, sending in the PCGS, uh, you never lose, even if you get clean coins or not. Um, and let's just start off by showing you a few things. Here's a 1916D, graded uh, AG3 by uh, NGC, or PCGS, I apologize. Uh, the coin overall is nice. I thought it would AG3 just because of the nice detail it had uh, right in between, or right by the ear. Um, and when you flip it over, I think it had just enough detail to make an AG3. Uh, either way, it, it came back really nice. Very nice and original coin. Um, but uh, what, I'm, what I wanted to talk to you guys about is that when you send in coins, right, when you're going to see a few screw-ups that I made, you might lose financially, but you won't lose in terms of knowledge, in terms of... Uh, I guess what I have to say about it is when you make mistakes... You'll remember those more than than the wins you'll have sometimes because you'll start to think about the coin differently. Uh, start to ask, was this coin whizzed? Was this coin cleaned? Uh, do I need to take a second look at this coin? All things that you start to ask yourself because at first when I sent in a bunch of coins, I ended up like losing on my first submission just because, yeah, no, it, it, it I wasn't that knowledgeable. I didn't have too much uh, information and I was still new to it. But as time has gone on, I've gotten better and better and better at it. And that's something that, that takes time, but it ends up being worth it. Uh, next up is this 1858 uh, <laughs> Flying Eagle scent. So I had a friend, his name's Hudson. He tried to send this coin in to get uh, a poor one a few months back. And he's like, try it again. And we tried it again. And it's still fair too. But, you know, like I said, sometimes uh, coins take one or two tries uh, to, to try to see if it'll uh, do what you want it to do. And um, it's really all up to you how you want to uh, go about the coin. I don't know if Hudson wants to submit it again or if he just wants to uh, sell it as is. But still an interesting coin. And uh, let's see if something continues with this story. Hey guys, this is Drew. Welcome back to another whiteboard session. And we're going to be sharing with you guys another uh, coin story today. And this comes from yours truly. So uh, basically, I think... How many months ago, maybe five or six months ago, we bought a really nice Standing Liberty quarter uh, at a coin show. Um, it was really nicely toned. Here are a few qualities about it, though. I, it was beautifully toned, arguably the nicest 1930 uh, Standing Liberty quarter we've ever seen. Um, it was in an old OGH holder, um, and they graded them really strict back then. And uh, another thing to consider also is the coin was only graded once. So I ended up buying this coin because I thought <clears throat> they could upgrade and if not, uh, it was still a nice coin to sell. So this is a story that happened with it. I bought the coin uh, for $5.50 at the show, got some help for the coin, and now uh, the coin, I had $800 into it. Uh, when I got the reconsideration done, the coin went up to a mint state 67. And when it was a mint state 67 coin, it was tied uh, for top pop for uh, non full head uh, standing liberty quarters and so I was like you know what? I'm done I don't I don't need to do anything else with this coin it's top 
top uh, pop for a non full head. It's tied for it. So I sent it off to Heritage and it realized $2,520. And I'm like, you know what? Your boy, so smart, he's rolling it. Okay? So the guy that actually won this coin, well, what happened? It got reconned. Okay? It got reconsidered. And what happened when it got reconsidered? You might already know. It got reconsidered. And it went mid state 67 plus. Now it's top pop again with no other contenders in its race. This is the top pop of the whole series. Uh, they put an estimated price guide out on the coin for 6500 bucks. And so, you know, I ended up making money and I ended up enjoying the coin a lot. Uh, it was a wild experience, but there's a lesson that I had that uh, I'm always going to hold on to. And well, it's kind of what we've been talking about a little bit recently. Uh, my lesson I have is if you have a nice coin, don't sell too soon. Spend some extra money, spend some extra time. If you have the right coin, slow and steady wins the race. Because look, if I was slow and steady and win the race and I resub the coin, that possible $6,500 could have been ours. So uh, just something for you guys to think about today. If you have a nice coin, uh, take your time and uh, you'll end up reaping the rewards of it. But let's get back to today's episode. Here's a win for Hudson. So he actually ended up selling a few, sending in a few for me. This is an 1806 uh, 50 cent. I think it's a braided, uh, braided half dollar, um, braided Pretty drape bust half dollar, but it, it, it has a pointed six. It has no stem. Uh, the coin is is pretty nice. We had a few issues that we were concerned about it with, which is these kind of divots here, and this almost like a scratch, uh, two scratches that you might see there. Um, but with circulated coins, sometimes they take it easier on you. They give you a little bit more uh, kind of leniency because they know that uh, coins have survived this long in this nice of condition. Uh, this uh, almost problem-free uh, example, uh, we're going to have to give it a straight grade. And so sometimes that, that line is gray and fuzzy, and uh, you don't really know, uh, you know what they're going to do. But I think uh, you know Hudson played his cards right on this one, and he got a nice coin. So I took a few gambles on this one. Uh, Casey wanted me to send in a half, and we ended up doing so. Uh, this is a 1964 Kennedy half dollar graded uh, MS65 by PCGS. We thought the coin okay, would be a little bit higher, but as you're going to see in this video, Luster uh, does have to play a huge role in terms of grade. Uh, this coin's a little bit terminal on the obverse, and uh, on the reverse, it is pretty clean. I thought this coin would do better, but it ended up not doing as well, which is okay. Um, you know, we'll get him next time, but. Luster, like I said, did play a big role in this coin, um, not doing well, in my opinion. So, um, just something for us to consider, um, and let's show you guys uh, the next one. So, for all you guys that said this coin was cleaned, uh, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. This is a 1987 uh, Silver Eagle graded uh, genuine uh, cleaned unk details. Uh, a lot of people said it was cleaned, and I looked at it a few times, and I said it wasn't, and I sent it to PCGS, and it was, so uh, congrats to whoever uh, was right. I mess up sometimes, and I, I'm learning still. I've seen a whole ton of examples look like this, um, but when I took a closer look at it when I got home, I could see what they were talking about, and uh, you know, a little bit of a bruise to my ego, but... It is uh, helping me understand uh, American Silver Eagles because they do tone quicker um, just because of the silver content of them. And, uh, you know, I it's just the way it goes. And I, uh, I am sorry if I came after a few people saying this wasn't cleaned. Uh, you know, I don't know everything. Um, but uh, I think that, you know, we're going to still try to keep American Silver Eagles in our mindset for when we submit. Just uh, make sure we do our due diligence and take a little bit extra time to review these. This is a coin we bought at uh, a local coin shop, Royal Coins Houston. It's a 1949D. We knew it was full bell lines. We were trying to see if it would get a 65 full bell lines. Um, the coin ended up not doing so. Um, and I think, what again, once again, it's the luster that's playing an, uh, a real big part in this coin. Uh, the toning on 
uh, the obverse really uh, put a damper on it. As you can see, it's just a little uh, dark, spotty, um, something that they just couldn't put a 65 on. And there's a few little light scratches across the coin. Uh, but it's a nice coin. We'll get our money out from it. Uh, and like how we were talking about before, there's trade-offs to each coin. There's trade-offs to each uh, submission. Um, basically, what I was thinking is like, you know, if this coin's 65 FBLs, uh, you know, we can make a little bit of money. If this coin's 64 FBLs, we'll break even. But uh, let's cut it to our whiteboard session today. Up next, these are probably the nicest coins of the submission. Got these from our friends at Imperial Coin Exchange. Um, this is an 1881S MS63 Plus uh, Morgan dollar. Uh, as you can see why it's plus is because of the eye appeal. And you know, I think that they gave it a bump just because of that color. Um, we thought this coin, I thought this coin was on the verge of it being clean because of all the haziness and uh, halos around the stars to the bottom left. Um, but they ended up disagreeing with me, which I am very excited about. And if you zoom in on this color, you can just see the attractiveness of it, the eye appeal of it. I mean, just phenomenal. Uh, I really enjoy the coin. Uh, I'm very happy that, uh, like I said, that it was a straight grade. And also the true views are pretty nice as well. Um, you know, we, you guys are going to see the thumbnail with all of our true views on it. But if you would like to take a look at all of our true views, um, just make sure to go to PCGS's website, type in this cert number, and it will pop up with it. And all these coins will be available on our website, AkushaCollectibles.com. They will be available to you guys first. That is a guarantee. Um, basically, you know, what, what we've been doing is selling coins in advance and uh, uh, been marking them sold on the website. And that's just something that we want to stop doing. We want to make sure you guys get first shot at these. So uh, head over to our website. KushaCollectibles.com and uh, pick this one up if you guys are interested in it. Here is another gorgeous coin that we purchased and ended up sending in. This is an 1881S Morgan Dollar graded MS64 by PCGS. I thought the coin could do a little bit better in terms of grade. Uh, the color on it's very nice. I like it because it's it's terminal, but it's not too terminal if that makes sense. Um, the luster is just beaming. There's a nice bull luster to it that 1881S Morgans have. And I I like the coin a lot. Uh, I'm very glad that it's straight graded. I know that it wasn't the grade we, that we expected. But it's still a beautiful coin for the shop. So I hope you guys like it and check it out over there. Um, you know, it's just you don't find coins like this too often that are still raw. So anytime you can send in a beautiful coin like this, we take up that opportunity. Here's the most interesting coin, uh, I would think, of the video. This is a 1967 uh, Kennedy Half Dollar, graded MS64 by uh, PCGS. And when you put it in the light, it has this really nice green end of roll, almost look toning to it. Uh, I really like the green and the purple and the blue. And it's got also these fingerprints to it, which is, you know, it's not something that's not appealing to most people. Um, but to me, I think it's really nice, just because it it's not that ugly uh, fingerprint, but it's more of like a... Uh, a toning fingerprint. Let me zoom it in a little bit. You see how, I don't know, I think that the, just the, the fingerprint itself has some interesting toning because, you know, I think someone put a fingerprint on it a while back and then it started to tone over. And so I had to submit it because I thought it was just so unique. Uh, most fingerprints are just not attractive, but this one really, uh, really is. But if we flip it over to the back, you can see this is what you would call unattractive toning, unattractive fingerprints. And if you guys didn't know, and fingerprints do take away from the grade of a coin. Um, so do your due diligence when you're sending in coins. I submitted this coin for the color. And uh, understandably why, it's just a stunning coin. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you did enjoy our video, please leave a like. It supports our dream. You want to comment your thoughts? We like your thoughts. What do you think about the coins? What do you think about what we had to say? And subscribe. You got to join the community. We're just, I mean, we're the best ones on here. Let's be honest. And why do you want to subscribe? You don't want to miss an episode. I mean, we got great coins coming out, great information as a dealer coming out, um, and giveaways pretty soon. So, uh, like I said, do all those things, and we'll see you in the next episode.